What's up guys? My name is ESO and welcome back to the channel. In this video I will be showing you how to activate the secret boss known as the Reaper in Skyrim. This boss is pretty creepy and extremely unique to say the least. There's actually no quest to even summon him, so it's somewhat of a secret boss to the average Skyrim player, and a thing you can very easily miss unless you just happen to stumble upon it or someone tells you about it. The Reaper exists in the Soul Khan, and in order to summon him you need to get three Reaper gem fragments. These are quite well hidden, so I'm going to walk you through how to get each one so you don't get lost. And then at the end of the video I'll show you a boss fight against him on legendary difficulty. But we must first travel to the Soul Khan. This is the area you travel to in the Dawnguard questline. And if you don't know how to start this questline, just check out my guide in the description below. Eventually, during the questline, you'll get a quest called Chasing Echoes. During this quest, you'll be guided to the Castle Volkir which is just here on the map of Skyrim. So just follow the quest marker through the dungeons of the castle until you come to the castle courtyard. Once in the courtyard there is a puzzle here that can be solved by finding three of the missing sundial pieces for the giant sundial in the center of the courtyard. There are three in total to get. The first one can be found in the left in this tiny little pond here. It's just behind the rock resting here, slightly submerged in the water, the Half Moon Crest. After you've got that, just go straight on and we're going to go up these stairs here. At the top of these stairs you should find the next one, the Crescent Moon Crest. So after that just carry on and we're going to go right at the bottom of these stairs. And as you can see there's a little garden. At the, at the back of this garden you'll find the last one, the Full Moon Crest. And there's actually lots of nightshade in this garden if you want some good alchemy ingredients for crafting poisons. So just come over to the central sundial and start placing all these crests on their missing plinths. As soon as you've activated all the crests, a secret passage will open. Then we just need to head down the stairs into the depths of the castle. But I bet they'd run right under the courtyard and into the tower ruins. Well, at least we're getting closer. Let's go. As soon as you come through the door, by the way, you've got to pull this lever here to open the secret passage. You'll then need to navigate through the rest of the castle. And again, just follow the quest marker, it is pretty straightforward. Just take care of all those sneaky gargoyles that you're going to come across, because they always try and jump scare you. Soon though, you'll come to what looks like a dead end with lots of gargoyles in it. Once in this room, just come over to the fireplace here at the back and activate the secret handle, which is the candlestick on the left. This will open a secret passageway so we can proceed onwards. So we're just going to head on through this and then up the stairs to our right. Just carry on going up these stairs until you reach the top of the tower. At the top of the tower is a laboratory. We must now perform a ritual to actually enter the Soul Khan. This is very easy. First we need to go on our right and grab this journal here, just situated in the bookshelf. After you've got this book, give it to Serena, who will then update you with the quest. She'll ask you to find several different ingredients, the first of which is the fine bone mill, which is just on the table right next to her. Then up the stairs we can find some soul gem fragments in this bowl. Grab that and then go all the way up to the top, just to this balcony over here. On this bookshelf you will find the last ingredient, purified void salts. Now you have all three ingredients, so just come back to the centre of the room and put the ingredients in this little bowl here. Serana will then add her blood and open the portal into the soul card. It's a pretty epic moment. Incredible. But before we can actually go inside this portal guys, we must make a choice. Firstly, you can either be a vampire already, or let Serana turn you into a vampire, which she'll do for you right now if you want her to. 
Or secondly, which is the option I recommend going for if you don't want to be a vampire, sure. you can actually tell Serana to, to partially trap your soul. This will basically you weaken you, but only when you're inside the soul card. It slows down your magicka, stamina and health regeneration and also lowers them a little bit as well. But you can easily regain your soul if you follow my other guide in the description below. But once you've made up your mind and chosen, proceed onwards into the portal. From where you enter the Soul Khan, you're going to proceed straight on down the main path towards the giant black castle wall you can see up ahead. I'm going to play through this video at a normal speed because I appreciate that not everybody is familiar with the Soul Khan. I'm actually using a horse called Arvac and if you want to get Arvac for yourself there's a guide on how to get him in the description below because you can also get him here in the Soul Khan. So once we get to this large black fortress wall, this is actually going to be a reference point which we'll use later on in the video. But for now, we're just going to go straight on up this same path straight ahead to that giant castle in the background there. You can clearly see it up ahead. This is actually the castle where the main quest takes place. So you'll have to come here anyway. But I'm going to use this castle as a reference point. After getting each gem, we will return to the front gate of this castle before going to get the next one. There's actually no map for the Soul Khan, so this is why I have to show you the video in this way. And guys, if you didn't know, I've actually already made guides on all the different quests in the Soul Khan. So if you haven't already, you can check them out down below in the description at the end of this video. So once you actually do reach the giant castle, we're going to take a right and we're going to carry along keeping next to the castle wall. Just keep carrying along this path following where I'm going, all the way along the outside here. But if you come outwards towards this black building, just around the corner here, you'll see in the distance there's actually a floating purple soldier floating above this small ruin. You'll usually find the reaper fragments beneath these giant floating soul gems. So to get the first one we just need to climb up the stairs towards the gem. Take care because when you do get close to the giant soul gem it will try and drain your health but it doesn't do that much damage so I wouldn't worry too much about it. There's a chest beneath the gem and this chest will have the first reaper gem fragment inside. Remember we need to get three in total. So now guys, to get the second gem fragment, we'll once again need to start from the castle. But this time we'll look south. Just use your compass, because to the south we'll see a glowing castle on the horizon here. Now we're just going to head in the direction of this glowing castle. Literally go straight towards it. Quite soon you'll see up ahead there is another building with a giant floating soul gem on top. Come around to the right here and then just get off your horse. Just use this staircase to enter the building. Then we're just going to go left and we can enter the main entrance of the building just here. There's a portal in the main entrance, so just jump in and this is going to take you up to the roof. Once on the roof, just below that giant soul gem in this chest we'll get the second reaper gem fragment. So we've already got two of the reaper gem fragments and now we just need to get the last one. So for the last time guys, start again at the castle, but this time we're going to want to look directly west. And now we're just going to head directly west in this direction. Take note of the landmarks as we walk along because this one is a little bit harder to follow. But you're literally just going west in a straight line. You're basically going to want to keep going until you see this large building with a soul gem floating above it. This isn't where the chest is going to be though. Instead we're going to go up this staircase to the top. Then we're going to go left and down this staircase. 
Once you get to the bottom, go left and just literally follow along this path. And if you know where you're going, feel free to speed up the video and go ahead. We're just going to keep going straight on down this pathway. But soon up ahead you'll see another giant floating soul gem above a building. This is where we need to go. So get off your horse and go right up this staircase. You can literally loop back around to the left here. Now you'll be faced with a pretty easy puzzle. Here's where we need to shoot the arrows into the green glowing circles in order to open this gate. It doesn't actually matter what order you do these, but after you've done both, you'll open the gate. So now we can proceed through and we can get the last Reaper Gem Fragment. So now we have all three fragments, so we can go to the final boss location. So now guys, we're going to go back to the first landmark, which is this giant black wall between where you entered the Solkarn and on the other side, the giant castle in the distance over there. So starting from here guys, we're going to go towards the castle a bit and then look right and we'll see a glowing tower in the distance. So we need to head all the way over to the foot of that giant glowing tower in the distance. It shouldn't take you too long to reach it. And if you guys are enjoying this video, you may also want to check out the other hidden boss location videos which I've made previously on my channel. There are tons of hidden sort of things like this in Skyrim, where the game doesn't actually tell you they even exist. You just gotta go and explore and discover them. Once you finally reach the bottom of the glowing tower, you're going to want to go left along this path here. Quite close down the pathway, you'll come across this tomb-like building with these interesting looking doors. This is where the Reaper resides. So we have all three Reaper Gem Fragments, all separately in our inventory now, and I'm going to tell Serana to wait outside. This is a battle we must do on our own. Be quiet Serana, I'm trying to talk. We must now check we are on Legendary difficulty, because we want a challenge guys. Legendary, there we go. And I'm going to get my bow out, my crossbow. Hopefully this fight is difficult, just a standard crossbow. We're going to have a bit of a challenge here. Let's do it. Here is the Reaper Lair. So you can actually come in here before... Serana, I told you to wait outside. Part ways. You can't get rid of me that easily. Why will you not leave me alone? Serana apparently refuses to leave me. She's too in love. So here is the Reaper's Lair. And as you can see, the architecture is pretty crazy. Lightning strikes the top of this building and then it hits this portal here and then we have the reaper's shard Receptacle and this is where we can activate the shards and as you can see there is literally These are like all the bones of all let me see if I can get a torch out here guys These are all the bones of all the pe the souls that are teleported into the soul Khan. It's um, a bit crazy really isn't it? It's kind of scary but there's actually some, it looks like vomit or something on the floor here. Okay guys, I'm going to activate the Reaper Shard Receptacle and we're going to summon forth the Reaper himself. Here we go. Oh, Reaper Gems have, oh my god, Jesus Christ. Okay, let me get my bow out. Okay, here we go, man. Let us begin the Reaper. Oh my days, it didn't do a lot of damage. Didn't do a lot of damage at all. Oh my god, he's so big! He's huge! I haven't fought this guy in ages, so I thought it would be funner if I did it live. 
for you guys to watch. He does have some interesting attack. Oh my jeez. He does have some very interesting attacks and mechanics. I don't want him to... Oh my god. Like throwing up on me effectively. Chundering on me. I wonder how much his axe hits for. I'm going to let him hit me. Oh no, he's going to vom on me. Whoa. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. That almost killed me in one hit. It's kind of like a poison effect that the um, that the afflicted use. I'm going to have to use a healing potion here, guys. Oh, my days. That was so much damage. That was like 200 damage almost right there. He's trying to do it again. Like, you can see him rearing up for it. Oh, God. It's got a very short range, though. I wonder what happens if he hits me. How much damage does he do? Nope, don't hit me with that bloody vom attack. Okay, that was that was his bash. That did quite a bit of damage just there. Nope, nope, nope. Don't hit me. Okay, now hit me with your axe. Let's see how much damage you do. Why is, he just wants to vomit over me? Why are you so vulgar? Oh, Serana. Beat the crap out of him, man. I like how ghostly he is. He also looks like he has like unique armor. Like, that hood is definitely unique. Oh my god, I'm going to have to use a potion of cure poison here because that does a lot of damage. Oh wow, it does a lot of damage indeed. I'm going to have to kill this skeleton so he doesn't accidentally kill me here. Stop trying to vomit me. Right, attack me normally. He's just refusing to attack me. <laughs> He doesn't even use his axe. I'm sure he should be using his axe. I don't know if this is a bug or what the deal is. Man, just one hit from that poison though really hurts. Yeah, he's refusing to hit me with his axe. I don't know why, guys. I'm just going to take him out. Goodbye, Reaper. He's a very easy fight. I mean, to be honest. Apart from that vom attack on legendary difficulty, which really hurts. I mean, if I was to hit, kill him without healing, then it would be a bit harder, I guess. But um, he's not too difficult, to be honest. He's actually quite an easy boss, considering how much effort it takes to summon him. Check out this bone guy over here. Look at him, man. Let's finish him off. Goodbye, Reaper. Oh, arrow to the knee. So he does have this onion battle axe, which is just a completely generic normal battle axe. And then he turns into soul embers, which is uh, basically... Or is this where he died? Ghostly remains, sorry. This is where he dies. Black soul gem times three and a daedra heart. That's all he drops. So is it worth it? Well, you do get three black soul gems, but that's it. And you can't take your soul fragments back. But there are other places you can grab them if you want some memorabilia, I guess. It's it's kind of not worth doing. But the boss fight and the fact it's so secret because it's not even a Mark quest is pretty cool. Now, I don't know why he wasn't actually attacking me physically. Because he should also attack you with his iron axe. But his vomit attacks do a lot of damage, as you saw. He also has a frost resistance of 25%, and he's got a 100% resistance to poison, which you may have realized because my poisons actually didn't do any extra damage to him. He's also immune to the unrelenting foreshadow, and you cannot paralyze him. His health depends on your level, but at level 1, he has 220 health. And I wouldn't really call him a hard boss battle at all. He's just a fun sort of gimmick, really. I'm quite disappointed, though, that they didn't actually give him a unique enchanted weapon or even a Sith, which would have been insanely cool if they did. His outfit, though, is quite unique, but you cannot loot it, so it kind of sucks a bit, really. If you guys are interested in the lore of this boss, I'm actually considering doing a separate video on the backstory of the Reaper. Not much is really known about the purpose of his existence, so we can only speculate. But in short guys, I believe he acts as a Grin Reaper, serving to sever the last ties between the soul and the body. And if that's something you're interested in guys, make sure you smash that subscribe button and then hit the little bell icon next to it, to ensure that you get notified as soon as that video comes out.
But guys, thank you very much for watching me ESO, and I will see you, loyal subscribers, in the next Skyrim video guide. Have a fantastic day, and goodbye.